Hi, this is Ginger from My Sister Scrapper. Today I want to share a Simply G45 project with you. This is a cute little Halloween treat box that I created. I saw a cute little project on Pinterest and I thought, oh, that's adorable. So it's inspired by a Pinterest project I saw. Um, I used the Halloween in Wonderland Deluxe Collector, Collector's Edition for the images and some of the design papers here. Um, but it's really cute. It's this little box here and it's decorated on the sides in the back and I had a little label here and then the cute thing about this is it stands up and it's got these little knobs here for little feet so anyway and then the little treats are right here on the inside so that's my cute little Halloween treat box I stamped Hall Happy Halloween from one of the stamps I had in my stash some more design paper here I fussy cut the cute little uh, Alice out and this is a little border strip here it's more design paper I made a little banner out of the flag and then I found some little sequins in my stash there's some little bats and some little orange and black sequins there and then I put a little sticker on the back here that says curiouser so anyway it's a cute little way to present your Halloween treats this year so we're gonna go ahead and make this little project I'm gonna show you how I created it so obviously you're gonna need some adhesive your scoreboard your paper trimmer some foam adhesive, um, some detail scissors to do your little fussy cutting, or you can just use an image and you know cut it out square if you want. Um, I'll, if you want to do a stamp sentiment, find a little stamp. You don't have to use that as well. Um, you're going to need a little piece of chipboard um, for the base, just so it makes it a little more sturdier because you are going to have your treats inside and just makes it a little more sturdier. And uh, here we go. So, I went ahead and pre-cut my papers, but I'll give you the measurements um, just to save a little bit of time here. So, we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our scoreboard and we're going to get our little bone folder out here. So, for the base of the box, your piece is going to need to measure 11 inches across and 7 inches. So, 7 by 11, and you're going to put it in your scoreboard with 11 inches across the top. And your first score mark is going to be at a half an inch. Your next score mark is going to be at two and a quarter. And then you're going to make another score mark at five and three quarters. And seven, seven and a half. Okay. Then you're going to take it and you're going to rotate it a quarter turn so the seven inches is across the top. And we're going to score at one and three quarters. So I'm using heavyweight um, 100 pound cardstock, so that's why my score was a little bit heavy. So we're done with the scoreboard. Now we're going to grab our scissors and do a little bit of cutting. So what we've got here is we've got a large panel, a smaller panel, a large panel, a small, and then that little half inch uh, section right here. So, and then our one and three quarter score line is along the bottom. So what we want to do is we want to remove that little tiny half inch tab along the bottom. Just like that. I'm going to remove that off. And then we're going to go ahead and take our scissors and we're going to cut up on each one of these score lines just to where it intersects with the horizontal score line. So again, we're going to just take our scissors and cut up and stop right where it intersects with the horizontal score line. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to give these little tiny squares here a little trim here so they'll fold a little bit better. So I'm just going to take my scissors and just angle in or miter the corners or whatever you want to call it, but we're just doing it on the little squares here. Just take a little sliver out. Just makes the box fold up and look a little bit nicer and a little bit easier. And this side. Okay, so it should look like this when we're all done. Now what we want to do is, I like to add my tape first, and I'm going to use uh, score tape here. You can use wet glue, you can use whatever you prefer. Since it is a box, I would use a stronger adhesive than just a regular tape runner. So I'm going to add my little tape here. I like to add my tape first and then go ahead and um, trim my corners. So then I'm going to go ahead and just angle these. The top here at the bottom on this little tab and this bottom section here. Okay. 
Okay, now we're going to go ahead and fold on all of our score lines. And fold up on the bottom as well. Okay, so that's our little box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to decorate. I like to decorate the outside of my box before I put it together just because it's a flatter surface and it's a little bit easier to do that. So I double matted the box with some orange and some design paper. So you're going to need two panel pieces here for the large panels and then two smaller pieces here for the sides. And these two um, larger pieces of orange are going to be five by three and a quarter. And these two pieces are going to be five inches by one and a half. So I'm going to add those first. Should have a small little border of black showing. And now we'll add the two little side pieces. Okay, now I'm going to add my design paper here to the orange panels. And this is going to be for the design paper, I wanted a little bit smaller orange border, so these are four and seven eighths by three and an eighth, and you're gonna need two of those right here. And then the two side panels are going to be four and seven eighths by one and three eighths, and those are gonna go right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those next. And I went ahead and, just to save time, I inked around my edges already, and I did use uh, Distress Ink and Black Soot for that. So there's our cute little box. Now we're going to go ahead and fold it up. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to fold this over, take the backing off, and then just put it together right there. So pull the backing off, fold this over, and should line up. And there we go. That's our little box. Cute, huh? So then all you do is just fold in the sides and um, where my seam is, I want that to be the back of my box. So I'm going to fold in the sides and then fold in the back and then I'm going to add my score tape right here. Now, if you want to add more tape to the bottom you can, but again we're going to have a little base on here so it's not necessary. Again, this is the front of my box, this right here. So I'm going to take the backing off the tape. I'm going to fold those in, fold this in, and square up my box. And there we go. And you can go inside and use your bone folder or just press the tape down. Okay. So there's the seam, so that's going to be the back of my box. So this is going to be the front of my box. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the little base. And for the little base, um, you can do one of two things. You can do the way cheater method, what I'm going to do, and, or you can wrap your chipboard, your piece of chipboard, and do it. But you know what? I decided not to do that. So your little piece of chipboard here is going to measure just slightly under the, the black. So you're going to need two pieces of black cardstock and for the base, and they're going to be four and a half by two and three quarters. And you'll need two of those, four and a half by two and three quarters. And then you're going to need your orange, which is going to be just smaller than that, which is going to be four and a quarter by two and a half. And then the pattern paper, because we want it to match, is going to be four and a eighth by two and three eighths. Okay. 
So we're going to go ahead and put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and layer my pattern paper onto the orange first. Just this. And then I'm going to take this and layer it onto one of the panel pieces of the black. I'm going to flip this piece over and on my chipboard I'm going to add adhesive and just I'm just going to sandwich this piece of chipboard in between. Now if you want you can take your black marker and go around the edges of your chipboard just to cover it up but it on the this one I think I use black chipboard it doesn't really show though so that's up to you or you can use your ink and just you know ink the edges really really quick just to darken it up a little bit to make it black or you can again you use a black sharpie but I'm just going to use my ink here really quick. Okay. Now we're going to sandwich this in between our chipboard, or in between our two pieces of black cardstock. And it's just cut slightly underneath the measurement here, so it will be hidden right in there like that. And then we're going to take the other piece and we're going to sandwich it right there. And that's going to be our base. So I'm going to add the adhesive to the chipboard. And I'm going to just Stand it up like this, and put it on there. Easy peasy. Again, you can use whatever glue you want. I just use my ATG tape for this. Okay. So that's our cute little base and then it's going to sit on here like this. So what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and add some more really strong adhesive. And again, you can use wet glue if you want um, or score tape, either one. You just want something super strong. So I'm going to use score tape and again I'm putting it on the bottom of the box. And that's going to sit on there. But before we do that, we want to add these cute little feet here, like I did on the first one. And what I used um, were these little tiny knobs I got at the craft store. They're just like, I don't know, they're like little drawer knobs or something. But you get a, I don't know, quite a few in package. And I just went ahead and used some black craft paint and just painted them black. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to glue them on. And I just eyeballed where I wanted them. So we're going to put those on and then set that aside to dry and it should dry pretty quickly. So to glue those on I'm going to use just this little wet glue here. Again you can use whatever you want. And I like to put the glue on the knob. And I did it, I just kind of eyeballed it about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. I know it's kind of hard to see black on black but you get the picture. It's just to make it sit up off the table a little bit. Just kind of makes it look even cuter than it already is. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just going to press those down a little bit. And wait for the glue to set up. Carry away there. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to decorate the front of our box. So again, and you can use whatever images you want. I went ahead and um, found this cute little Alice on one of the little cut apart. So I'm going to use her. And I'm just going to fussy cut around her. And I am not the world's best fussy cutter. But you know, that's what uh, ink is for. So once you cut it out, you just kind of ink it up. And nobody's going to know the difference. So I'm just going to start right here and I'm going to go 
around the leaf. And again, the key to fussy cutting is um, you want to you move the paper, not your scissors. But again, my excuse for not being so good at fussy cutting is um, I never went to kindergarten, so I never learned how to use scissors correctly. <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, but again, that's what the ink is for. So I'm just going to go around her hair, um, and then around her little hat. But you do want to use a little pair of scissors here. I'm going to try to cut most of the purple off. And then when I got to her hat, I thought, you know what? There is no way I'm going to fussy cut that little bow. So what I did was I just cut it off. It just looks like she has a little green band. But, you know, if you're really good at fussy cutting, then you can cut it out. Again, I never went to kindergarten. I never learned how to use scissors correctly. Okay, there we go. There's cute little Alice. Again, I'm going to take my ink and disguise some of my shabby fussy cutting. <laughs> it's all good though, right? I mean, it's such a cute project. Who's going to really look at your fussy cutting skills? Not me. Okay, so Alice is all ready to go. So what I did was I added a little border strip along the bottom here. And um, when I first cut this out, you know, sometimes when you're cutting, you get these little strips of paper, but they're too wide. And so you want to make them a little skinnier, but, you know, you try to put it in your paper trimmer and it's like, ain't not going to work. So here's your G45 quick tip on how to do that. You're going to take your little strip of paper, and I'm going to use this as a sample. Grab your paper trimmer. And see what I mean when you put it in your paper trimmer? It's like there's nothing to hold on to. So just take a post-it note. That's what I do. A little sticky post-it note here. And then line it and stick it down on your paper. Like this. And then you can you have a little something something to hold on to. So we're going to trim this down to half an inch. Right there. So that way you have something to hold on to. And it's not going to wiggle around in your um, in your trimmer and it's perfectly straight instead of, you know, how sometimes you put it in there and it gets eh. So there's your quick tip. Use a little post-it note on a little strip of paper and you can get a nice even cut. So that's what I did with this one because I had too much black showing and I wanted to trim it off. So I just used a post-it note to trim it. Worked out really, really good. So I'm going to add, back to my box here, I'm going to add this little border along the bottom. And I think I'll just put it on with glue. And then for Alice, I'm going to put her on some foam tape. want to add a small little piece to her broom so it doesn't get wonky and her little hat because I don't want it to bend on me okay so I'm just going to take the backing off and I'm going to put Alice right there on the front okay and then I'm going to add a little I want to bring in some of the purple here so I just cut a little one inch strip and flag the ends and I'm just eyeballing it on how big I want it I'm thinking ah, that looks pretty good right there so I'm just going to chop it off and I'm going to glue that down And then I went ahead and stamped my Happy Halloween and used a little 
punch and punched it out and I'm going to layer it on this little tag punch. So there we go. And I'm going to put that up on some foam adhesive as well. I'm going to use these little dots. Okay, we're going to put her, we're just going to put her right there. It says Happy Halloween. And then we're going to add a little label to the back. You don't have to do that, but I thought it was kind of cute. So I punched this label, I fussy cut this label out from the design paper. And I'm going to add it to the back here. Put their, you're giving this to as a gift to somebody, you can write their name on there. That'd be kind of fun. And I'm going to put that on a piece of foam tape. Because why not, right? And I'm going to put that about right there. Looks good. Super cute. And now to finish it off, I went ahead and I found these little... Don't ask me where I had them. They were in my... God, they're in my stash. Um, some little sequins. And I'm going to put a few of those little black and orange ones on and I think there's a couple of little bats in there and to do that I don't know if y'all have one of these but seriously you need to get one it's called a jewel picker it's the best so when I'm adding sequins I like to add my glue first just where I think I'm gonna put them so I'm just gonna add a dot of glue there and there and I think that looks good and let's find there's a little bat right there we can put him on there Right there, he's pretty cute. And here's a little orange one. We're gonna add the little orange one up there. And let's see. Hmm, let's add a little another little orange one over here. Maybe. There we go. And let's add another little bat. We'll put the other little bat maybe on the little banner. How about that? There we go. And I think I need one more because it's bugging me. I'll put a little sequin over here. Oops. Golly. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to press them down with my bun folder. All right, so there we have it. That's our cute little box, and now we're just going to add it to our base. I think our little knobs are dry. Yep. So we're just going to take the backing off here. Move this just a little closer to me so I don't get my head in the camera and my husband holler at me. And I just kind of looked down on it and I just kind of eyeballed it, tried to center it left to right and top to bottom. It's kind of nice using that little paper with a checkerboard on there because it kind of that looks pretty good to me. And then just press it down. So there you go. And then you can take your Wink of Stella and add some little shimmer to her hair and her little broomstick and the little pumpkin faces if you want. That's what I did on the original one. And then just add your little treats on the inside. So there you go, everybody. That's my little Simply G45 Halloween treat box using the fabulous Halloween in Wonderland paper collection. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Bye.